Hello there. This is Nelson Olmstead, and I'm about to take you beachcombing on the Oregon coast. Before I start, let's listen to Clint Gruber, who has a few words from Pacific Power. Welcome once again to Stories of Pacific Powerland, a presentation of Pacific Power and Light, the company that has been serving the electric needs of the region's homes, farms, and industries through more than half a century of progress and growth. Now let's join Pacific Powerland's favorite storyteller, Nelson Olmstead. The mist of morning swirls in from the ocean and prowls about the driftwood shapes on the beach. A Pacific storm has passed in the night, but with the dawn the shore is calm again. Only the thundering of the breakers and a lonely cry of a seabird can be heard. And yet, from somewhere on the misty beach come voices, a curious time and place for human conversation. Let's listen. Hey, look, Mom found a blue one. Say, that's a beauty. Hey, I have three and... One's a rolling pin. I think we just about covered this section. Let's move up the beach a ways. And the family group, poking eagerly into piles of driftwood, digging into hummocks of sand, moved slowly out of sight along the beach. The beachcombers are seeking the most prized jetsam the Pacific casts ashore, glass fishing floats. These curious relics from the sea wash up by the thousands along the entire western coast. But the broad beach at Seaside, Oregon seems to be one of the most productive hunting grounds for these attractive glass balls anywhere in the West. As a result, glass floats are a never-ending topic of conversation and speculation among seaside people. One experienced beachcomber will tell you, well, you see, they break loose from the nets of the Japanese fishermen in the North Pacific. You'll see many of them have Japanese characters printed on the glass. Um, well, each fishing fleet has its own color. The purple ones are very rare. They, they come from the emperor's special fishing fleet. But this man's next-door neighbor may have an entirely different version. No, well, you see, uh, the Japanese fishing boats carry a glass blower on board. They simply manufacture the floats as they need them. Then when they're on the way home with a hole full of fish, they dump the floats overboard and the prevailing currents bring them to this coast. Well, the facts of the matter are sometimes rather difficult to separate from the romance. Historically, glass fishing floats have been used for more than a century. An expert on the world's fisheries adds still more color and romance to the beachcomber's quest for the elusive glass float by reporting, uh, examine these floats carefully. They're not all Japanese by any means. Most nations with extensive fishing fleets use glass floats. Some will be marked uh, British-made, others uh, German, Russian, or Belgian. The floats marked with an F are manufactured in Norway. The ones marked NW were made in Seattle, Washington for the Japanese trade. Well, glass floats, as any Oregon surfsider will tell you, come in a magnificent variety of colors, sizes, and shapes, as well as nationalities. Some arrive covered with barnacles, with pieces of fishing net attached. They range from about two inches in diameter to whoppers larger than a basketball. Many have undoubtedly tossed and drifted for a number of years, have acquired a sand-blasted surface or an extra tinge of color from the action of chemicals in the sun. In fact, there are nearly as many types of glass floats as there are glass float collectors. And luckily for Pacific Powerland vacationers, the North Oregon coast, particularly around Seaside and Gearhart, receives as big a bonanza of these treasures as anywhere else on the coast. So on your next holiday, why not try beachcombing? The work is healthy, the hours are your own, and who knows, you might decide to make it a lifetime career. Thousands of Pacific Powerlanders do. Thank you, Nelson, for another interesting story of Pacific Powerland. Now may I put in a word about clean, dependable, economical electric heat. It's economical because it's efficient. Flameless electric heat doesn't send wasted fuel up the chimney to heat the outdoors, which means you get full value from your heating...